Movers, I'm Brad, and that's Nora. Stitch Fix, let's talk about them. They're important. They've been riding high. The company has been on a rally and earlier today briefly hit a new record of over $33 a share. Wall Street only getting more bullish on the stock with three of the analysts who cover the company having a buy equivalent rating. Joining us now to discuss is Melissa Armo, owner of the stock Swoosh. Melissa, great to have you as always. What is, hey, what is behind this optimism coming from Wall Street right now? Well, I think it's a stitch, stitch fix is very interesting because it's kind of like the wave of the future where you can, I don't know if people know this or not, but you can go online and you can order a look. And they have a personal stylist, and for only $20, that's all that you pay. They style it together a look. It gets shipped to you, free shipping. And then if you like the look, then you buy it. It's very convenient. And living in New York City, I'm telling you, stylists charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour to put together a look. So this is very, very reasonable. And I think I really think this is a wave of the future. But a lot of people don't know how to put together a simple outfit. And it can make a big difference, especially if you have a big event or even a job interview, something like that. I sure but, don't. <laughs> I could use this help. But, I mean, that's the thing, Melissa, is maybe Stitch Fix is one of the first players to do this, but there are so many companies popping up trying to do the same thing. Why are investors so optimistic about Stitch Fix specifically? First of all, they have a great website. I don't know if you ever went there or surfed around. It's really nice. It's really easy. It's very convenient. All the graphics, everything is very nice. So I don't, I don't know why, but I will tell you one thing, just looking at the stock, technically speaking, this is one of the very few stocks that came out with an IPO, and they're not out for a year yet. So it's it's kind of risky when you buy something long-term that isn't out for at least a calendar year, which they're not. But I will tell you the one thing that they've done well is they didn't overprice the cost of buying into it initially. They open and the stock has rallied ever since the IPO. You didn't see that with Twitter. You didn't see that with Facebook. You didn't see that with Dropbox. You didn't even see that with LinkedIn. All of those stocks were so heavily overpriced in the IPO that they dropped initially. So the one nice thing about the stock itself, if you do want to get into this long term, it's a comfortable position in here because they came out at a good a good solid number. They weren't overvalued when they came out and the stock has risen and it's made brand new all-time highs today. Well, you know, I guess the question a lot of our viewers might be asking themselves is you, you have two different ends of the spectrum in this kind of services and, and subscription as a service type of business model. You've got one end, which is a blue apron, which is on the meal kit delivery side, and you've got your subscriptions there. Or you have your Stitch Fix subscription, which is performing well. And we all know how Blue Apron is doing, giving up a significant amount of market capitalization and value since it's gone public. So how does a company in today's environment make sure they get to this end of the spectrum that Stitch Fix is on and exceed that instead? Well, I think you got to look at who you're marketing here for something like this. In other words, millennials would be interested in this. Millennials probably are not buying into Blue Apron. Do you know what I'm saying as, as far as using the services? So this is something where I, ca I can't name one age bracket that doesn't want to look good and probably needs help fa with fashion sense. So this is, this is something that's marketed to all age levels at some point. And so Blue Apron, even Blue Apron, although it, it sounds great to have the meals come, you still have to cook it. And personally, you know, like, like I, I would love that, but I don't like to cook. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I think this, this, is just, this just applies to a broader age bracket, more consumers, more customers than the Blue Apron, because even though you get the food, you still have to cook it. So it sounds like Seamless is actually the biggest nemesis to that, Blue there Apron. There you go. Okay. That's exactly. true, but I would, I would argue against that, though. I feel like Blue Apron is targeted towards millennials. If not millennials, then who? Well, I don't know a lot of millennials that like to cook. <laughs> I just want to buy food in here. Oh, do you? I do. I do actually love to cook. But from scratch, oh, wow. though, right? But from scratch. Yeah. I cook from scratch. Yeah. Wow, he doesn't need blue you. apron. <laughs> I try. All right, all right, back to Stitch Fix, though. What do you okay. what do you think is the long-term view? What's your long-term view for Stitch Fix? Long-term view, I like the stock, and there's a potential. It could even get to, uh, you know, almost double where it's at right now. If the stock can get over $35, even like it up to $50 in the next 6 to 12 months. And, I, and that's almost double where it's at right now. But if you look for the earnings that came out on June 8th, 
The stock was around 21. It hit up over 33.50 today. So that's just within 30 days. This stock has had a massive 13 point move. So the idea of it going up to 50 in a year from now is not crazy. I don't think this is great place to buy right here the second today. The stock gapped up today and fell and the market's rallying today. So I wouldn't buy into it today. But long term, there's a potential if it keeps going, if the next earnings look good, they're not till October towards the end of this year that this stock, if it hits over 35, could very easily easily see with a strong market up to $50. And again, what I like about it is the fact that they really held on when they started in the IPO. It, it, it really just rallied ever since then. And that is a very strong sign for the stock. Okay. Another component to Stitch Fix, Stitch Fix Kids. Uh, what's the success? What's the sentiment on the success of this new offering? I haven't really taken a look at that, so I can't really speak to that. But, it, I, you know, my guess is that they're going to try to look to do the, something similar, where they're going to start at it at a good price, not overprice it, and look to have the same kind of – of a rally. I mean, I think that that's key. And I think that's another thing that investors look at. Again, sometimes people are looking at value or they're looking at price points. So I don't know what, I don't know exactly what they're going to do with that, but they're probably going to try to do something similar to what they did with this. Okay. So well, let me reposition that question. Where does that effort fall in line compared to some of their other efforts at Stitch Fix to make sure that they are going after the right target market? Where, where could this kids component fall in the broader revenue pie? Well, again, it goes back to the same thing where they've got to have the good marketing. They've got to be able to appeal to, to find those people. So if you have this thing for the kids, what are you going to get to? you got to reach the moms. you got to reach the moms. It's probably the people that are going to be buying the stuff for the kids or maybe some dads. But, you know, a lot of moms are shopping online to buy stuff. So you're competing again against the Amazons. The one nice thing about this, the nice thing is that they have putting the outfits together. It, it'll be really interesting to see if that takes off for kids. All right, Melissa Arma, owner of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you for joining us. As always, great to see you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, coming up, Apple is slicing into Spotify's lead in the U.S. music market. We'll dive into what that spells for the music streaming landscape. That is next.